And now part two of my chat with Big Brother's big bad villain, Evil Dick. When you love who you are and stay true to yourself, you inspire others to do the same. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you, or visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. How has HIV changed you? Oh man, it's... Starting from ground zero and just like going on basically like the yellow pages or going online and like just Googling HIV clinics um, and finding my way around the whole thing. Um, it, it's been a really, really different, strange, up and down experience. I'm not going to say it's like, oh, it's been such a great experience. It's been f***ed up. It's been mm. f***ed up in a lot of ways. What has um, it taught you about yourself? Oh, man. It just it teaches you that, like, that you are a really strong person. They go through all of the bullshit. Um, there was, there's just, there's so much to deal with and the cost of the medication and going to all these doctor visits and not having insurance and like all of this, just all of this shit to deal with. Um, and so and how did you, de how did you deal with it all though? How did you get on top of just, it? Cause you are now healthy and undetectable, right? So yeah, detectable, um, since, I don't know, since, uh, I think since I went into treatment at like, I don't know, six months at the most right. before I became undetectable. And I've been like ever since. And that was, that was like, God, I can't believe it's nine years ago now. Um, yeah, it's nine but years that, ago. But, but you raise a good point because there are a lot of people out there uh, that say, I don't have insurance. I can't afford these drugs. What am I going to do? So how did you make it work? Yeah. I just, wow. Well, <laughs> the, the first thing was that it was, <laughs> here I am. You got to remember what I was just talking about. It's like being so surreal and like my, like just walking through this cloud and having to have like, like literally the second hardest conversation I've ever had in my life and telling my girlfriend that I've been with for two years that I was still like really in love with, who I thought was going to break up with me because of this, um, that I, she might be HIV positive as well. And that she's in needs to get tested and like all of this shit. And, um, it was, Oh my God, it was so hard. Hmm. It was so much to deal with. And like the first thing on my priority list was like, going and getting her tested and all of that stuff. It's like, I'm not going to die in the next two or three weeks. So, you know, I can deal with mine, you know, do my thing like on the DL. But um, so, and where did we go? Planned Parenthood, I think, um, is where she got tested. And when I told the woman there, because I went in there with, with her, and the woman's like, they didn't tell you, make an appointment for you and get you like, get your, get you, dialed in with doctors or anything they just sent you on your way and i was like yes she's like what she's like that's like against the law they can't do that like it's against the law in this country you can't find out somebody's positive and just send them on their merry way you have to get them dialed in and sent to treatment and stuff so um anyhow they help me out a lot but um and then i have i i just left the show and there's there's literally millions of people trying to find out why I left this show. Mm. And my first time, my first fucking doctor appointment is in this clinic. And I, I have to walk into this place with this big green awning that says HIV AIDS, like, like painted right across it. And I'm like freaking out that it, anybody like just all they need to do is with their phones, just take a picture, send it to DMZ or whatever. And I'm like out it, I'm fucked, you know, it's just like, so I'm like, did just, you believe that? I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but did you really, did you believe in your head that if people, if once the general public found out that you were HIV, you really were screwed? It was, I didn't want, I wasn't ready. Right. I wasn't ready to go public, number sure. one. I'm just trying to deal with all this shit. I don't even know if my girlfriend's like positive or non positive or like what's going on. I need to, a chance to wrap my, my head around what was going on. Um, I was not ready for like whatsoever. A year later, down, after we found out that she was negative, uh, my girlfriend was negative and all of that, I approached her and said that I would like to go public. And she was just like, no, absolutely not. And da 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 da. And at that time, we were together. So, um, as far as I was concerned, she did have a say because it would affect her. 
Um, and it was the stigma predominantly, I, one would oh, presume, so, but that's why. 100%, absolutely. Um, so anyhow, but after we ended up breaking up, and uh, VH1 was contacting me over and over and over and over and over to go on this couples therapy show, and I told him I wasn't interested in like, I don't know, they approached me like five different times. And when it kind of clicked in my head that I could use that show as a platform to go public, that's when it was like the light bulb went off over my head. And that's when, that's when I wanted to do the show. Like I kept blowing them off and I just like, I wasn't really interested. Um, the, the money was good, don't get me wrong. But I just, I, I was like kind of like past that. Right. Um, in my life. And I just kind of wanted to move on and like, I don't know. So I don't know. But um, once I thought that this would, because then you think about like, okay, if I'm going to go public, like how do you go about it? Do I like do an interview somewhere or do I do a YouTube video or like, how should I do this? And I don't know when, when it clicked in my head that I could do it on the show, it just made it just made sense, especially for a show like that, because with the couples therapy, it didn't really affect my relationship. It affected my relationship way more than I was willing to admit, even at the time. Um, from the time that I was diagnosed, like I didn't me and me and my girlfriend, we didn't have sex again um, for the entire time we were together, which was two more years. And is that so, because you were scared of infecting her or she was concerned or it was just a mutual thing and it, we didn't talk I, about it? I think it was kind of a mutual thing. A lot of it, uh, we didn't talk about it. A lot of, we didn't talk about it, did fall out. We did in certain ways, but um, I don't know. Like one time we got into a fight and she's like, said something about like sex. And I was like, this is like not on me. This is on you. This is if you're comfortable, not not me. I'm like, drop your pants, let's go right now. <laughs> I got, you know, but. You're the one. You're the one that has to be comfortable with it, not me. And at that time, it wasn't um, undetectable equals. Uh, was it untransmittable? Untransmittable. Yeah. Um, it wasn't like that. Um, like they didn't know yet. I don't even know if prep was out yet. Um, was it nine, ten years ago? No. Yeah, I, mean, I thought it was like a little bit after that. So like, n like none of that shit was like. Um, like known or what's happening at that time. And because it was so, uh, it probably would have done me, um, probably would have benefited me more to do like some type of group, group therapy or group something with um, other HIV um, positive people, but I didn't. And it just kind of like, I felt like it just, kind of closed closed me off I didn't I didn't really get into like learning about the disease all that much I just knew what I needed to know and made my appointments and did what they told me to it was undetectable and fuck that it's not gonna like define me you know uh, although I should have I don't know I should have been you just, I don't know, you just don't know as you're going through things. You just stumble through life and you hope you do the right thing. Right. You know what I mean? And something like this is like, it's like a big f***ing deal. And, you know, I would look up on the CDC website and uh, you, you end up like Googling for like days uh, on, on what you should do and what you shouldn't do and so on and so forth. Um, I didn't, uh, there were so many things I didn't know about the disease um, then. Um, I don't know. And then when I broke up, when I broke up with, we stayed together too long because I figured that that, I figured that that relationship would be the last relationship, romantic relationship I would be in my, be, be in, in my life. Yeah. I remember you said that on, you said that yeah, on couples was, therapy. You were like, this is yeah, the last relationship they, I'm ever going to have. And they played it up so, so hard. Well, listen, I think uh, that's something that anyone living with HIV um, relates to. I certainly did. And, 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 and until I learned about U equals U and things like that, that's what I believe. Damaged goods. Like, who wants this? Um, totally. What is the, and you know what? Yeah, too, I, I think in the, 
I think it's different in the gay community as this than the straight community. And how I so? think that tell me tell me how it's different. I think dating I think dating is a lot easier in the gay community oh, than the straight community. God, dude, let's go have a drink in West Hollywood and we'll have a chat about that sometime. <laughs> I think dating in any community in this day and age, uh, for reasons beyond our control, uh, called technology and smartphones and, and social media apps is difficult for anyone. But see, I just thought I, I figured it would be I just thought it would be easier. I just did. Well. Um, there's, I, and there's no, there's no, like, there's no book on how you're supposed to do this. Um, I'm on like regular dating apps, um, and I'll, you know, connect with someone or whatever, and we'll go out, and I always try to, I always try to, I, I'm in this weird thing where I don't want to tell them too much about me. Because then they can, they can Google me, and that's like one of the first thing that comes up, and then I get like ghosted or um, or they cancel or whatever, and so I like hold back on telling them too much about me, um, and and it's hard because one of the first questions when you meet somebody is what do you do for a living? Why well, do webcasts? Hmm. Um, but what are they about? And it's like well, reality television, and you know, and then I try to like kind of veer away because if I get too much into it, it's like, oh yeah, I won and da 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 and then is they that, want to Google is, like, is, is this still how you are sort of in present day? So is there still that level of, I guess, not fear, but but anxiety still within you because of the stigma and that sense of once th they find out that you are who you are and that you're HIV positive, the door gets slammed in your face? A lot of times it does. Yeah. I think a lot of people, um, so, I think a lot of us living with HIV can relate to that. What have your, what's the reaction been like from your fans? And, and do you have a message that, for your fans? That reaction has been like, seriously, when, when I went public on the VH1 show, I did um, an interview with People magazine. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to like, the VH1 show was supposed to air like on Wednesday night or whatever. And then the Thursday, the People Magazine interview was supposed to come out. Well, they did something. Between People Magazine and VH1, they decided that it was going to come out Wednesday instead of Thursday. And nobody even, like, decided to contact me because who the f*** am I? I'm, like, I'm not just a dude that was in their interview and on their TV show. But, you know, why should they tell me? So um, <laughs> so I woke, up at, I woke up that morning and, like, you know, I look at my phone. It sounds off. I look at my phone, see what time it is, and I see, like, like 200 text messages and like 300 emails or something ridiculous. I'm like, the f is my phone broken? So I look at like the, you know, the, your text messages show the first couple yeah, yeah, lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of them are just like People Magazine and HIV. And I'm like, what the f That wasn't supposed to come out until tomorrow. So I like, wasn't ready for it. And, but it was like overwhelmingly positive. I expected, I expected a lot more talking to me it's the internet it's the internet right um, and, and listen i've had death threats i've had like all of the shit over the years i was expecting a lot more talking the the overwhelming response was just so positive and my fans have been absolutely amazing like uh, you know even all these years these years later um but there were so many people that um there were so many people that were just so supportive and just showed so much love. And um, it was it was pretty amazing. It really, really, I, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest with you. Uh, but I didn't expect that. Um, so that was like, it was crazy good. So where do we stand today with HIV, evil Dick Donato? I mean, you're living with it. You're undetectable. What do you say to those folks out there who still think this is a gay man's disease and once you get it, you're dead meat? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> when I was diagnosed, with, was the the same time, like within months of Magic Johnson had his 20 year like anniversary of, of him going public. And it was so weird because people are like, oh, you're so brave. You're so this. It's like that dude, that dude was the, that dude was the brave dude. That guy was like, he was in the middle of like the war zone of HIV AIDS back when that happened. Um, and him, him going public was like, I mean, the world knew, mm. I mean, it was like crazy then. Right. Right. Um, and with the, the basketball and they had to like change the rules and like all of 
fit with him. Um, what he did was like absolutely amazing. So because of that, you know, it's like I knew it wasn't going to die. You know, what I knew it wasn't going to die. I knew that they had drugs. But, you know, that drugs that would like keep you alive and so on and so forth. But other than that, I didn't know shit. Um, it's, um, things, being HIV positive, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. It may, listen, it makes your life, it makes life tougher in a lot of different ways. Um, I mean, cut the bullshit. Everybody like, now nah, it doesn't affect my life at all. Bullshit. It does. Um, I've had to like, they just, they, they just, where I live, they just got it set up where I can get my medication in the mail after like almost six years here of going up and them not having the drugs and coming back and having to go back and forth and like all of this crap. And I mean, you have to have enough. Of, and I went to Africa last year for three weeks and getting an extra month was just like, you know, waiting for Jesus Christ to go <laughs> walk, on, walk on water or something. Uh, like really, it's like crazy how how it is with like because the drugs are very expensive. Yeah. So they're like really careful with them, and um, you know, so you gotta like you gotta plan your you gotta plan your life. It's like you can't just say say Fuck it, let's let's go, man. It's like oh, hold on, I only got like six pills here. We're gonna be gone nine days. I can't do it, man. Uh, you, I don't know. It's uh, it, it makes it makes things um, some things are a pain in the ass. Um, but it's not. Um, it's not the end of, not the end of the road or anything. I mean, it's been, um, nine years since I've been, uh, diagnosed and, um, I've had some really good times uh, since then. Um, you know, life isn't over. You, um, you get on, uh, you learn, um, and you, um, just enjoy your life as much as you can. Yeah. I don't know. I was never one of the, that wanted, I was really afraid because I was on this television show that like to be like the the poster boy of HIV or something. And I didn't mind, and I don't mind talking about it at all. I went, dude, I spoke in front of, I don't know how many, it was 100,000 people at AIDS Walk LA, um, you know, and um, out here in Orlando, uh, I've, you know, done a bunch of stuff. But um, I, I, don't know, I don't know, being a straight guy, being a straight guy and being um, a, a straight woman, I feel like in this community, you kind of get like lost in the cracks right. or forgotten about because yeah. it's so prevalent with um with gay men and with a lot of the foundations and uh, charities and so on and so forth that it i never it's so weird how political all of it is because there's so much there's this big pile of grant money um that the u.s doles out and they're all vying for like mm. this piece of the pie so it's all like super political and it's just like okay i'm really not interested in doing like any of this so i didn't want to, i didn't want it to define me and it hasn't defined me and i haven't let it i get involved as much as i can or as much as they'll let me type of give and take you're following what i'm yeah, saying no and you know what i want to say i i appreciate you still talking about it uh and still being somewhat of the poster man for it because i i'm a firm believer in conversation the more you talk about things and get things out in the open the less they become scary for people uh, i have loved every it's minute of our chat and i feel like i could chat to you for hours more you got to come and check us out next time you're over on this coast i do have one last question for you sure. will we be seeing you on big brother anytime soon yeah uh, that's not uh, that's not gonna happen i'm not to say listen i'm not i'm a lot older now it's like 13 14 years later uh, even then, I was the oldest winner back when I was forty. So you're not, so you're not ruling it out. <laughs> I think I'm done. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I Evil think I'm Di done with all of it, to be honest with you. Well, thank e you. Evil and thank you for having me on. I thank you, Evil Dick Donato. It's been an absolute pleasure, and thank you for joining us. Now, if you want any more information on the conversation we've had today, you can follow us across at Plus Life Media, uh, and we're also online, PlusLifeMedia.com. Evil Dick Donato in Florida. Thank you very much, and thank you.